TLO, what's poppin'? We you are on kick. We are not live, but you can leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. This is the set. I mean, uh, I'm tweaking. Right above me, if we do go live and you happen to miss it, this is the channel where you can catch any updates and things of that nature or um, any highlights. Don't forget, we do got the Patreon. We post here five days a week. Appreciate the Patreon fam. And also, we got merch. Merch. Yeah, man. The link to this is down below. You go down below in the description of the video, you'll see link tree. Click that. And everything will pop up, man. This is UK Drill to Deadly London Gangsters, a raw and honest interview. Molly Strip, Rondo, Montana. The taboo Room. Now, I've already watched the first 10 minutes of this. I was recording, but it was on mute. So let's just, let's, I'll reiterate what I was saying when I was saying it. I wouldn't have been Rondo if, if, if you never did music. I'll be in jail. We enjoy a storm. Hundred thousand percent. Yeah, as y'all remember, Rondo, Mont Rondo Montana. He was one of my favorite artists when he was uh, making his rise. Um, I don't know if he's still making as much music as he was before, but I'm pretty sure he got some cooking up. Hopefully, you know what I'm saying. I've heard some stuff. You know, but it ain't, it ain't, for me, it ain't hitting the same as when he was first coming up. The last couple songs, I was like, eh. But we'll see. Dead or in jail, I can't lie. You're right, Rondo, how are you? Impressed, bro. Rondo, could you tell me where you was born and what your childhood was like, please? I was born in Homerland Hospital in Hackney. Uh, grew up there. I'd see clothes from when I was born. So I was around. I got to that year three. Went to school in Hackney. Got kicked out in Hackney. Ended up going to Leon. Got kicked out there. Ended up having to move to Essex. Dagenham sides. Got kicked out there. Man, got kicked out of every single opportunity. <laughs> Man, what? Like, what? Chill. And then boom, from there it was just, just outside. Oh. Why was you getting kicked out so much? But what was happening? Uh, mostly fights. I can't lie, mostly fights. Um, disrupting classes and shit like that. That's how it was, fights and disrupting classes. Class clown. Minor things like, <laughs> minor things for, First reason, first time I got kicked out of school, the one in year three, that was for, I sprayed bleach cleaner at someone's face. In kicked, year yeah. three? Yeah, by them times that was a little man. I don't know, I don't know, it was that deep. <laughs> but I was a little man. You spray bleach cleaner and- Yeah, so, just playing about, spray them, went in his eye, he started moving mad, and <laughs> then boom. He just came my that. Yeah, love. And that was year three as well. And then when I left there, I ended up going to um, down school in Leighton from year three to year six. Then in year six, I got kicked out again. Play fighting. Allegedly. Dumb shit. Then from the time I got kicked out of year six, they just kept me off education until I got to that year seven. Then that's when I went to mainstream secondary. How? And then I ended up getting kicked out of year seven. And then from there, it was just units, prison units all the way for like three years. And then I ended up getting jail. Why do you think, Rondo, you was getting kicked out so much? Because, you know, it's like... I'd basically just built up that reputation of being a troublemaker. So it's like, any little thing I was doing, they were all man. Yeah, straight away, they were just all man. That's a fact, man. If you, like... Especially school-wise, man, if they look in your, in your 
file and all they see is trouble, 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 trouble. That's what you are to them, 100%. There's no, there's no thought process in their mind like, oh, yo, he can change. He can be a changed person. Because my senior year, I tried. I tried. Like, high school just wasn't fun. Like, it wasn't entertaining to me. Like, nothing was difficult. So, I was just, just doing whatever. But uh, my senior year, I actually, like, stopped playing around. And I was like, man, let me, let me just show them real quick. I was on honor roll. I was staying out of trouble. You know what I'm saying? One little mishap happened. And because of my all the previous stuff, I got kicked out of high school. And I was like, salute. <laughs> Went to an alternative school, graduated a half a year early anyway. So I take that. But yeah, I get what he's saying. So it was just one of them ones. And what area did you grow up in? I grew up, initially I grew up in Hackney until I moved to Leighton. And then I grew up in Leighton. What age did you move to Leighton? I moved to Leighton when I was like, like eight years old, seven years old. And what, what's life like in Leighton? It's all right, you know. I can't lie. It was growing up in Leighton. It was. Oh my god! I just realized I said that this video was muted. I hope the last video I did was not muted. It's an hour-long video. I hope it would only be the end of it though. It was, it was good still, like, it was, it was quiet, like, I didn't really see anything mad going on. It was a nice area, you get, it was good to go, storm. And I guess, when did things almost turn left and when did you start to jump on road? When I first, first, first ever got sent to, to Joe. It wasn't really Joe, it was, like, just below Young Offenders when I got sent to STC. What's STC? It's like, it's like Joe, before you're allowed to go Joe. If you get it. So I was like, 12 years old. 12 years old? Yeah. Got well, found with some, some drugs. At 12? Yeah. Then they put me on tag. At then I breached the tag. You was so, on tag at 12? Yeah. But I was on the tag for you. Years, I was on tech for years from when I was like, I'll see from when I was like, I'm gonna check this video. TLO was, I know that in a pursuit near Basildon, intercept me, but you can have to wait. But this is a bunch of unloaded, it's a rock, he's going to cross visual contact. So the chopper got act of fighting, but okay. Stay here. Okay, we still good. <laughs> Grown man, KP. Okay, we still good. This is my bad that I'm doing this right now. It's gonna bother me and it's gonna make me not wanna, you know what I'm saying? It's gonna mess me up. So like the last four minutes of my video is muted. Okay, that ain't bad. I'm not worried about that. If it was like 14, I would have been mad. 11, you know. They had me on tag for, for like two years, but they sent me STC during the tag. So then when I came back out, they put me back on tag. Why were you on tag and what, what, what were the rules around the tag? Well, because basically like, I was one of them ones growing up. Like, I, used to be, I used to always go missing and that. Like, I would just keep it moving, you get it. So it was like, first it was a missing thing, like, I would, like the feds would just grab me, take me yard and that. And then boom, when I started getting, like when they were coming to grab me, when I started getting found with stuff on me, they will come, they will find drugs on me. Then boom, that's when it was like, cool. That's when they started playing, like, I was basically in the system from them, yeah. It's crazy to most people, I guess, that a 12-year-old would have drugs on them. Yeah, literally. 
How, how have you ended up at 12 carrying drugs? Like, how's that, how's that happened? Because that's, that's definitely not normal. No, it's not so. Uh, obviously, at that point, like, to me, it was do you get at that point, like, I didn't have nothing else, like. It was one of them ones, like, I was just a bored kid, do you get it? So it's like, I used to just be outside, shedding whatever, whatever. And that's when I first... Oh, yeah, to this part, uh, when he was trying to say adults bringing it to you, they got to know... I say he was trying to, he was being real elusive, being real not trying to say it, which is the right thing. You know? First started like being part of what I am now. If you catch my drift, do you get it? So it's like it was all new to man. Like, like literally just started, do you get it? So to the outside perspective, it wouldn't look normal. It wouldn't look as normal, but to me, it was like that was my life at that point. You get it. And how did you end up in that situation in the first place? Like, because obviously being twelve year old and having drugs, so someone older has got to, has got to give you them, surely. Oh, here it is, right here. Mm, yeah, obviously, you know how it gets. Like, nah. being real, not trying to answer it. Yeah, it was just one of them ones. Surely, I guess the person whoever spoke to you and gave you those drugs should know better, man. You're twelve. Yeah, you could see it. I mean, even if even if you're asking your twelve years old man, who in their right mind would give a twelve year old drugs? Even if it's to but sell. Then, but you know what it is. You have to see it as. Uh, and I said, I felt like right here he breaks this down perfectly. Like if you were from the outside looking in and had no clue how this be happening, and you were just listening to the media and things of that nature, this is cool. If you're seeing the same twelve year old. If this is your life, if that's your life, you're doing whatever. But they lifestyle, life. though, inside yeah. of this life. And you see a 12-year-old on your street every day with not doing nothing, just they are gallivanting on the road. Like, oh, me, personally, I would chat to the youth and see what's good and you get it. So it was just like one of them ones you get. And at that point in time, you're forgetting that man's 12 as well. So it's like, man ain't got no job. I'm not doing education. Like, at that point, imagine that it was the best thing for a man. It wasn't the best thing for a man, obviously, but for a man, it was like the only thing you get. And then what did you go on to do next? So you, you came out of the, what was it, STC? And yeah, I came out of the STC, just doing what I was doing, just used ways to be around, go from store market. Literally, that was my life. I got to the point where I was like 15. Then, yeah, that's when things just started. That's when everything started changing. Just for. When you said changing, what do you mean? That's when a lot of things happened in my life that I would say made me who I am today. You get it. What happened? Tell me. I ended up going to jail for like three and a half years. At 15? Yeah. And then I was curious, like, was his father around? Because, you know what I'm saying, a lot of this stuff be happening when there's no authority in the crib where you, like, no, there's no repercussions to play. I lost my nigga. Like, Talk to me about that. Obviously, it's just, it was one of the most, yeah, I lost my boy, he got stabbed. He was stabbed when he was, like, 17. And at that point, it's like, at that point, before he died, like, there was no, it, like, it wasn't what you see now, like. How you see, let's say, the whole of Marley Strip, like, I'll be real, it wouldn't be where it was to be. If it wasn't for the fact that I lost my nigga on TV, yeah. Rondo, for the people who don't know what the Marley Strip is, what, what is that? It's a family. Literally, it's a family. That's what it is, like, everyone, everyone, us lot, we never came up with all of that, London's most dangerous and that. We never done all of that. The police done that. We've never said anything to do with, do you get it? We always said it's a family. That's what it is. And then when this part came, I was like, kind of like the old school gangsters in the back of the day, they used to call it a firm. So like the, you know, those negative connotations, is that how you say that word? Were took away from it, kind of. At least within the group, they didn't want to call themselves a gang. They wanted to be known as more, more 
they were a gang, but they wanted to learn be known as more of a professional type thing. Kind of like the same situation going on with you know, they family. They say they family. They family. Okay. Everyone around, man. Anyone that says Marley Strip and not part of no gang, man. They just it's my brothers. You get. Because I'm assuming the police are obviously referred to it as a gang. Yeah, they're trying to. I don't know what they're on. Literally. When was it? When did the Marley Strip? When was it created? I couldn't even tell you. I don't even know. She is before my time. I don't know. Yeah. It's one of them. You know how family is, man. You can't ask when the family started. <laughs> <laughs> you know that, that, that. Literally. But I just want to, again, touch back Good on your point. family situation Good there. Point. Did you witness what happened? Yeah. It was one of that. Like, literally. I literally just left him. It split or not. And then, like, five minutes we're going to leave on him. He got a phone call, innit? Like, everything was just... Yeah. Everything that day was just... It was just so quick that I just... So All right, so this is where I figured out that I was muted. It was just... Everything was up blood, I can't lie. And when you got that phone call, Rondo, what, what was your initial reaction? What happened? And what was said? Obviously... The phone call my received wasn't that EJ had been stabbed or anything. It was just something had happened. Do you get it? So I never, the last thing I assumed was, was that. I thought it was probably like, it was just one of them ones. Someone's probably pulled up or something or something. You get it? So, but I don't it, be keeping up with people beef, but is OFB cool with Bali Strip? Because he kind of looked like, uh, he kind of looked like a young ab, abracadabra. Kind of looked like him a little bit. Then when man actually gone back to where man was, I'd seen the ambulance. I'd see him, like, look, it didn't look like... You talk like that him, man too. left to the time man came back. So much, it looked like so much had happened in such a short amount of time that like, it didn't make sense to me. By the time man got back, there was already tape, there was already the feds, like... They be quick. Gone to the, when I've gone to it, the scene of where it actually happened, I've gone there a couple of man's people. Then when man's looked inside, that's when I just seen him, like, I seen him on the floor, and obviously, I heard him. How old is this hearing now? Because he still looked like he's 16, but I know he, he said he went to jail for three years at age 15, so he got to be like 19, 20? Yes. I seen him trying to save him in that one. That's tough on anybody. That must be a traumatic experience, yeah, massively traumatic. Mm -hmm. Especially at 15 years old. That's that's no 15, no, no, well, not your average 15 year old is going to witness that, are they? Mm -hmm. and, and that surely would take its toll and I guess sh shake your. Uh, I also said this got to be like therapy for them because, like, I'm pretty sure, like, he normally. You know, hasn't had to sit down like this with somebody, like this interview type things. A lot of interviews for a lot of these inner city, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Gangsters or, or you know what I'm saying? Steppers. A lot of these be acting as like therapy. Therapy. It's like a therapy session. Let me talk. Let me get it off my chest a little bit. Whether they know it or not, that's what it be seeming like. Your mindset and I guess your, your, your future to some degree. Yeah. How do you reckon it affected you? It made me who I am today, but yeah, I'll be wrong. Like, there wouldn't be no run, though, if it wasn't for EJ dying. I'll be, be wrong, that. Now, you can tell there's still definitely a lot of emotion with that. Was six, is it six years later? Yeah. Oh, so he's 21? And I also said, um, it come a lot of, it come a time, like, it's always that moment and everybody's, Every like steppers or, or that's his life where it, where it turns them that way fully, you know what I'm saying? Like, and this was that moment where he turned this savage up. That's what I call it. Turn it. What, what moment turned your savage up? And this is it for him. Especially the fact that turned him up. He sent me Joe straight after as well. Like I was still mourning 
EJ while I was in induction, while I went to the join us. I was still mourning and everything he okay. cared. Like, yeah, it therefore played a part, man, 100%, 100,000. And why did you end up in the jailhouse? Because the day after he died, something happened. So I got arrested for an investigation, but they, they bailed me out. And then when they bailed me out, I got caught with drugs. So then they, they reminded me, he sentenced me for the drugs. And then a couple of days before I was meant to come out for the drugs, they ended up reminding me for what I'd got arrested for the day after EJ died. Damn. So then I ended up doing a whole nother year and a month for that. Done the sentence for that as well. And then I went to come out. You know what they saying, the day after EJ passed away, RIP, they spent that block. You know what I'm saying? Allegedly, they spent that block until they was dizzy. I could read before my 18th. And I'm assuming that that would be building a lot of anger at yeah, that moment in time. 100%. 100%. That whole sentence, I would say, was just a, it was just a manifestation. That's the only word I could ever come up with when I think about that. A manifestation of what? Me going to jail that. It just, it just built up everything that, everything I am today, I can't lie. Did you get any help? Did any counselling, any psychological help? What, in the jealous? Yeah, you had to do with No. I'll be real, like, it wasn't, I didn't need none of that, like, do you care? I would like to call myself a strong-minded guy. No, nah, you needed it. You just, you, you just told us clear as day. It formed who you was today, like, it formed... It could probably form some of the negative and it form like the positive you got going in your life, but you like needed it. But my, my whole mindset is everything happened for a reason. So you're not going to go talk to nobody in there. Sure, it probably have a negative impact, but would you be rapping and would you be in a position to do what you're doing right now? Probably not. Okay, yeah, like, I don't need to. Do that. I don't need to do the family repeating. Yeah, that's like just. Deal with my own things myself, like, yeah. I need to talk to anyone about anything. I chat to myself, like, yeah. So you know what I be saying? Like, this is probably the, I said this early, this is probably the first time he's ever chatted out loud about this. This, this is therapy right here. Literally. It's when I down one storm. And then when was you released? I was released. 2020, the end of 2020 is still. No, the end of 2019, sorry. And what did you do on your first day out? My first day out, yeah. I think I went to, I went to see my family, then I went to a party. Yeah, literally. And I guess at this time, are you still, yeah, I guess it still hasn't sunk in. You haven't been able to mourn properly, surely, while you've been inside? No, literally, literally still. And did you go straight back to the streets? Yeah, literally, second day out, I was straight back in, so... Straight back in. I guess when you're, when you're leaving the jars, you know, there's weeks to... Weeks where your release date is coming up, should I say. Are you, are you thinking that you're going back to the streets at that stage? Are you thinking, I'm, I'm not going down that path again? No, obviously, like... For me, it was, like... Unfinished business, if you can catch my drift, you did. <laughs> Bro got out of jail and immediately knew he was on demon time. He knew he was jumping right back in. To me, there was no, like, what of that walking away from the roads and that? That was no option. Do you, do you get it? Because it's like, there's no way from young, man's being on the road, doing what man needs to do. Do you get it? Trying to get out of this shit. To then lose my people, go through what I've gone through, all for no reason, and then to walk away from it with, with what? Well, no. I can't do that. I can't burn too many years for this shit. That's not happening. Well, and that'd be the attitude of a lot of people, man. That'd be the attitude of a lot of people. And go get out, get back in the streets, like, man, I put too much time into this, man. I'm, I need to finish unfinished business. And what the streets do, they'll finish that business for you, really. 
And in a lot of cases, the streets will wrap it up for you with unaliving. Not every case, but most cases. What was your life like when you came out? <laughs> when I came out, it was like, obviously it was different. It was, it was a lot different from when I'd been on the roads before. What was the main differences? Different. A lot of difference was the people around me. A lot of people that I'd grown up with were far away jaw. A lot of them took different paths. Some, a lot of them went to jail. Mm, it was just... So coming out, it was like, I came out to a lot of new fresh faces, to new things going on, new dramas, new everything you get. So. But it's one of them ones, like I said, I'd been manifesting it all while I was in jail, so it's like, everything I came out to, I expected to come out to you. Do you get it? Mm. That was one of them ones. Literally. And the person, I guess, who murdered your friend, what, what happened to him? Hold on, oh, hold on now. Now, this this is a crazy question now. It's tall. He's in jail. He's right there last week, right now. <laughs> hey, I'm my bad, G. My bad. That was funny to me. Y'all ain't hear what he whispered under his breath? That really be the mindset when you can't spend, you can't get revenge. I said, man, let free him. Free the op so we can spin him. That's tough. Say it again. Oh, yeah, the last three around, no? <laughs> Literally. I said, Storm. You it. My bad. And so we know you're, you're back on the streets at, at, at late 2019, early 2020. Mm -hmm. And tell me what you're doing at the moment on a day to day basis during that stage. Literally, back to where I'd left, literally. I was on the market every day. Literally, just doing what I needed to do. Yeah. And when did music start coming into your life? Music. I was real music. Up until that point, music had no factor in my life at all. Like music, I'd never seen music as a path of anything that, I don't know, nothing to do with music. I just used to listen to it. That's it, you get it. It's only when, while I'd been in jail, obviously, one of my people started doing the music thing, and then I could see that he was doing his thing, that Did that his motivation? And that, you get it. Who? At a point where I don't know what was going on. I'm just looking on the radio, and I'm seeing rare, rare, rare. Do you get it? So it's like, rah. So obviously, when I come out, I st Your boy was whooping, and you was like, why whoop, 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 whoop? So you trying to whoop with him. I get it. I didn't have that sort of ambition for music at all, but when I started going around the people that was doing music for my block, that's when it's like I see how it was affecting them. Like they were actually look, taking it serious. Then when I first went to the studio with my people, that's when man, that he got man to do the music thing. He told me that. Right, something, yeah, like, see what you can do in that, it? So, so fuck it, just read a little something, something, something. Just recorded it. These man said, yeah, it's hard, you get it, so. Ended up shooting a video, releasing it and that. And you gotta remember, man, he got that young mind still, too. He got out, he was what, 2019, he was 19? He got out, he could still, like, piece together something in his mind that sound good. And spit it, and it sound decent, cause he young. Older people can't do that. They can't. They can't come go to jail, not a rapper, come out a rapper, and it sound good, and and it come out good. Don't be working sometimes. Even when I released it, your mind gotta be free and young. Nah, I just thought it was just probably gonna be one of them ones. Get yeah, that's the you know, one two K. Get yeah, keep it moving, but it was actually. Was actually doing this thing, yeah. So from there, that's when I was like, 
this music option, this music seems like a bit of a, yeah, this might be a little bit of a way forward, but even at that point, the music thing wasn't where it was now. Like, the industry wasn't where it was now, so... It was just an avenue. It was just a, a thought you get until I went back to jail. What did you go back to jail for? I got recalled. They recalled Dang. for my first song in the store. What was you recalled for? They found, they, found a, they found a blade on me in the store. But they didn't find a blade on me. They found it local to me. And they just assumed on it. So they just recalled me for bad behavior. And then when I was in the jail, I was at that point, HMP. Uh, HMP's more. Who was your lawyer? You couldn't have beat that. Like, can you can you fight a recall? Like, it seemed like that's fightable. Like, it was local to me. I didn't have it on me. I shouldn't get be in jail for that. It's more that relaxed than why or why. So it's like I just used to basically do nothing if I was an HMP. I used to just step out, back out a newspaper, smoke my vape, drink a tea on the landing. Go back to my soul, watch some of the yokes and go sleep. You get it. Yeah, that's what they be saying. The youth offender is wilder, man. They fight, fight more. Like in H and P, they just be chilling. There's fights, but they be, you know, they adults. They ain't trying to be rowdy and be the toughest guy out here. But so then I started actually writing bars. <laughs> so then when I started writing bars, I used to step out in the yard and spray it to the man. Them the guys used to say that, raw. You get that. Like, you're actually hard. So then that's when I started just, that's when for my whole sentence in the HMP, I done it a year. I just started banging out bars, bars, bars. By the time I left, man, I had a booklet like, this fit, like, you get it. Then boom, just took it to the studio. When I come out, come out. Then when I come out, obviously, these times, basically my whole block got swept up, basically. In some whole, whatever. Conspiracy, whatever. Rico, as well. For the people who don't aware, aren't aware, what, what do you mean when you say swept up? Like, that, that they just they, they, they done a conspiracy in it. They just in one day they just hit, and they just basically took everyone basically. They yeah, just blamed everyone for conspiracy. Whole block with a Rico, <laughs> and that was it. You guess so. It was at, at the point. At that point, it was like it was basically just me on the road. Me and a couple, couple man, yeah. So then it was just like, cool, like, what can man really do now? That like, it's like, man can stay doing what man do and catch the same conspiracy that man just watch man's whole bit go through. Or man can try to switch it up and try to do something down the right path as well. Can't bear in man. Even though man, 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 man acknowledge man's a smart you and that, bro. But my name got the, my name got the necessities to fall back on now. Like the GCSEs and them things that you get. So it's like, music just, it just ended up becoming the only way. Like, this is, that's, you get, like I always say, like. That's what I be, man. That's why people better start treating their dreams like it's the only plan. Like a plan B will leave your mind, like having a plan B kind of messes you up. Like. When you get lazy or when things get hard and that plan A, you just be like, man, I'm done. I'm going to plan B. Like, But if you f have the mindset where ain't no plan B, ain't no giving up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It just turned into my job, basically. Where do you reckon to be in Rondo if, if, if you never did music? I'll be in Joel. I'll be in Joel Storm. Yeah. Again, yeah. Before he was doing music, he was in jail. If he wasn't doing music, he'd be back in jail. That's a salutable answer. He kept it real. <clears throat> Use Haverty's free design. Unskippables is crazy. Dead or in jail, I can't lie. One thing I say about the music, the music taught man a lot as well. It taught man to to actually know what man's doing out here. Do you get it? Before the music, I was, I would say I was more, I was more reckless. I was more like, I wouldn't really, I wouldn't really think about that. The music gave you something to lose. The music put fam food on your family plate, made you the breadwinner. 
now you think more. I'll just do it. I'll say, so dang, if I, if I get locked up, my family don't eat. The music is coming to that. Man, if I think twice now, do you get Especially being a bait face rapper as well. I have to think three times now before I do songs. Do you, do you have to look over your shoulder everywhere you go? Yeah, that's, yeah, of course. Anyone that's, anyone that does road, the answer should be yes. Do you get it? That's just, that's mandatory. Do you wish you, you wasn't doing road or you never got involved in this life? What do you mean? Do you, do you wish you had ended up in situations that you... Oh, 100, yeah. 100,000 percent. 100 million store. If I could go back and switch it, like, I would be the most well-behaved you in class, or the band that everything I needed to do, or the done the lich thing properly, or the no kill, no, no cap. I be thinking the same thing. If I could rewind time and go back to school and do all of everything from the jump correctly, I would. I would, cause I feel like life would have been easier. Maybe I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing right now, but. I wouldn't have had as much stress. Maybe I'd still have hair. Who knows? Actually, don't even got. I ain't. I ain't really got a chance. I ain't had that chance. That like me. You get. If it wasn't for music, I'd be in a maze. You get. I'm sure a lot of people. I'm sure a lot of people that's even picked up a camera to go shoot drill music. If it wasn't for drill music, they would be in a maze. Do you get? So it's like. It's therefore. It's therefore more positive than people make it seem to. Well, would you say, I guess, with the mainstream, it has such a, a bad stigma? Because me, the problem with it is because people try to make drill into something it's not. Do you get it? You cook that. I'm sorry, but it's just not that. Do you get it? Drill started off, it was something for the streets, like, it was. It was, it was, it was for the streets, do you get it, like, and now it's just for comfort. Everyone, it's like, anyone can just slap on a body these days and just say, yeah, man's young. You're right, he's right. It's saturated, it's watered down. People be capping, too many cappers. Doing, talking about the stuff they're not living, it's not authentic. I feel you. I'm gonna stab it. This that y'all want. Right, you get it. It's like, it has no... It just don't make sense. I'll be real, the Joe scene to me don't make sense. It don't make sense at all. It don't make sense. And do you think with your music, like I said, when I've listened to it, I'll be, I think you're massively talented. The, the the lyrics that the, what you're talking about can never make a song called "Don't Make Sense" and talk about everything that don't make sense in the drill and name names. Don't hold back. <laughs> Let's get forty million views. What you tell me? Never be. I feel like played on the radio. No, but that's that's. I'll be real. It's slight like intentional because I'm not a mainstream artist. A lot of people see me as a mainstream artist, but the reality is I am not a mainstream artist yet, do you get it? So it's like, even though people see me as a mainstream artist, like when it comes to my fans and that, I know what they want, do you get it? They want the whole, they want this. Negativity. Try, right, they want to be able to get walking out of bed on votes, do you get it? So, as a Joe artist, as someone who makes Joe music, whose fans are Joe fans, I'm going to continue to make Joe until it's that time to get it. When it gets to the point where it's like, you know what, it's time to move on that. Like, I'll move on, do you get it? But when, especially in the scene right now where it's like, everyone's, not everyone's a joke, but it's, it's just like, can't take the scene serious right now. When do you think you'll make that switch? It depends, you know, I don't even know. I don't even know. It depends, like... When my... When my... 
surroundings change basically okay the life I, what i speak on a beat is what i live that's what man's living today yesterday last week that's what man's living you get so man can't just decide to switch up how man rap without switching it the way i live do you understand what i'm trying to say to you it's like 100 percent. i can't do that i just can't do that you get Wonder, would you say you're scared to die yeah of course Everyone's scared to die. The fuck? And if you say you're not, it's cap. Fuck, everyone's scared to die. I'm just, I just put myself in positions where it's a, it's hard. <laughs> she take it with me, you get it. You get that. I'm not scared to die forevermore. That's incorrect. I'm not scared to die. I'm scared of dying at the wrong moment. I'm scared of dying without patterning what I want to pattern in life first to make sure my family is good. Yeah. Tim. Scared to die. Scared to die. Scared to die. I get it. I'm trying to make it. Yeah, make yeah. sure everything you get. Because this life is not. This, this, with this Jewish shit, this ain't. This is just one chapter in my life. You okay? get? I don't want to turn. I don't want to, I don't want to go out tomorrow and then it's just like, what? What's my legacy? Uh, cool, a few jewel tunes, rare, 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 it's that y'all But other than that, what more can I show for it, bro? That's not how I'm trying to go out. You get it. What's the future plans with your music? Can't lie. I'm trying to be a wireless next year. I'm trying to do a lot of things, I can't lie. When it comes to music... Well, I'm trying to be there too. <clears throat> I don't know who I'm going to be with backstage, but I'm going to be there. I'm going to take it there, Storm. I'm trying to take it there, 100%. I'm just trying to sue out what my little... You, he could definitely be a wireless. He just drop, just drop music. Drop like three, four songs a month until... And, and they'll invite you. You'll be there. That's so out. Hard songs, though. Run, have, you, have you ever been in a situation where, I guess... You've been in a vulnerable situation where you where you where you felt like your life's been in danger. But I think like with him, like as long as the beat is hard, he gonna go hard. Use Kayak filters. Gotta be careful. Don't give your ops too much credit right now with this question. Every time I see this commercial, it's cringy. Her wig is cringe. <clears throat> Oh. And, and people don't know what's it like living in your borough and growing up there all, all together. Yeah, it's mad. I can't lie, my bar is crazy. How would you describe it? Yeah, I'm actually different. My bar is crazy, Storm. It's a war zone, literally. It is a war zone. Yeah. But at the same time, don't get it twisted. That's not me trying to see. Yeah, my bar is good. Yeah. I mean, in terms of war zone, where it's like a lot of shit. A lot of shit happens that you wouldn't really usually see in other places. That like, you normalized a lot of things that shouldn't be normalized. If you get what I'm trying to say to you. Yeah, that's what happens in Chicago. A lot of th like death is super normalized. I don't even cry when people don't cry. Don't just keep going about my day. Say a little R.I.P. and don't even feel like nothing. That's what I would say about this. Get my storm. But then they're gonna call that. I love it. I love my bar. I wouldn't change now. You get Cause when I look at other bars, psh, you get it. Is there certain parts of London that you can't go? <laughs> of course not. Oh yeah, no, furthermore, Leighton Grinch, I'm banned there from my tag. Other than that, I can go wherever the fuck I want. Why are you on tag at the moment, Rondo? Allegedly, I was driving. Sounds. What call with some sound? Allegedly. So, like, if you want to take this music, like, you can do something with music, man. Like, you. you For you're, real. You're unbelievably talented. Mm -hmm. But I guess if you keep Agreed. doing gold, if you really want to leave that legacy, I guess. You can't do both. You cannot do both. 
And when I see a good artist disappear for a long time, I feel like he's on road. And he's trying to do both. But road is winning. So my advice, man. You know what I'm saying? You keep your ear to the street, but you got to do what you got to do. To, you know, to, 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 to get all your family to stop stressing about you. You know, to live a long life. Simple. People would be saying, but people want you to win, surely. Like, they'd, they'd say, leave road alone, man. It's true. I hear what you're saying, but you know, it is that. Like, I'm not there, man. I can't jump on them. I can't come to a microphone and talk someone else's shit. You get it? I can only talk my shit. You get it? And if I wasn't doing road, I wouldn't have no talk to shit. <laughs> shit to talk. <laughs> you get it? So it's like, can't you just recollect? I have some memories. It's, it's, it's political. I can't lie. It's political. It's one of them ones. But, inshallah, man, hope one day, man is able to look back on all this and be able to say, oh, no, I don't know what man need to do. I made it up. Everything, everything I went through, no matter what it was, it was worth it. Yeah. Man. That's all, man. That's all, that's, that's, that's all man really wants. And if you had one wish here, Rondo, well, we all hoping that you can one day do that. What that be? That my nigga was back. That EJ was still alive. That you can see that he was here to go through everything. That man's gone through. The blocks gone through all the progression, all these experiences that man's had to go through about him and that. That he got to be there. That's so. one thing. That's probably the only thing Polo Tribal got. And you're 21 now, you're under. And how many of your years have been behind bars? Seven. See that. It's in four years. That's insane, man. And you're only 21. That's it? That's what I'm saying. It's my story. I can't let that I'll be real. The prison, prison, that's another thing that that made me who I am today, so I can never take away from it. I regret it, but I don't regret it, if you know what I'm saying. And uh, I just wanted to continue to fire in the booth. Um, why was that taken down? And how much of your music is taken down? It's a joke. It's a lot of music is taken down. Like, I don't know what it is that like, they just... I felt, you know, I'll be, I know it is. It's because of the thing man say, in my tunes, do you get? But it's to that point, but they're just taking a piss that like, they would just take shit down now. Anything that looks like it's doing good, it's like they just come and take it, literally. And anything that's just there, it's like they just say, leave it, okay? Because there's tunes that I've, there's tunes that I've dropped where I've said the most craziest thing. You know? And it didn't do that much, that, that many numbers, so I'm just still up there right now. But there's tunes where it's like, I'll say a little, little, little sound, but because of that, you can see that it's going somewhere. God, they'll take it down. No, no. I don't hear nothing from when they take my music down. Man, I always have to hear it from whoever, whoever's posted my shit, have to come to me and tell me, yo, it's been taken down. Or man, I have to just search for it and not see it to know it's been taken down. They never directly come to me and say, yo, this is what's going on. You get So it's one of them ones. I'm basically just fighting a battle with. Nah, basically. And that's, that's why you got to get creative. You got to get negative creativity. You got to get negative creatively. And another thing I want to ask as well is about your music getting leaked. I, I say that's happening a lot, man. Yeah, that one there. Do you know what it is? I'm just, I'm just, I've come to the conclusion is me, I send my tunes around for video shoots and that for when people come, you know, when people are there, just not know what they get. Yeah, so, so I just come to the conclusion it must just be where am I sending it to people? They're sending it to their people and then their people sending it. 
eventually it's just getting into the wrong hands. That must piss you off, surely, man. 100%, but you know it is, it's one of them ones that, what can I really do, bro? Until man find out exactly who it is. Like, and don't think, it's not, trust me, it's not like that. Do you get it? Phones get searched for this shit. Do you get it? Like, it's a big thing, it's not a joke. Do you get it? But I just don't know where it is right now. So, man, do. It's just one of them ones, man, I feel just live with it. Yeah. But also, say, if you could go back, yes, seven years, so you were, what, 14, what, what changes would you make? Blood. I'm going to school. I'm putting my head down, doing my education. Yeah, I agree. Doing digit workings, stacking my change. And that's it, I'm just investing into the future. Can't lie. I will not touch this road shit as well. It's pretty much over. Yeah, man, that was a good interview, low key, man. Rondo is more well spoken than I thought he was going to be. Um, salute, man. It's a nice little th therapy session for you. I hope you enjoyed it, man. TLO, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post. I'm gone.